Two weeks ago, we'll call it, we knew we were gonna be in for a three week stretch period. We were gonna get Powell testifying before Congress. We were gonna get CPI data. We were gonna get important jobs data. <clears throat> we were gonna get Powell FOMC meeting. That was kind of the close of it. And we also had this other lingering thing, PCE, but the real catalyst, the climax, is going to be that FOMC meeting. And that period where we expected volatility, we expected it to be crazy and very entertaining, has clearly delivered and more than delivered. In this volatility, there are some opportunities presenting themselves and we're starting to see some extreme situations that I expect to reverse. We'll go over all that today. First, I wanna talk about oil. The worst week since, drum roll please, down 13% WTI in a week. Worst week since April 1st, 2022. What happened after April 1st, 2022? We went up to the highest oil price in years, in nearly a decade. So we should not let one week's move dictate our sentiment. Price should not dictate sentiment. What should dictate sentiment is fundamentals. And don't take my word for it. I expect the oil market to remain tight. I think it's been tight. I think, yes, we had prices pull back when there was egregious amounts of SPR releases on the market and China was locked down. But now those are off the market. Paper traders are selling their contracts into the market. And I expect that we're gonna uh, see a strong move from here. But as I said, don't just take my word for it. The IEA, Government Energy Agency, or International Energy Agency, is projecting the second half of the year to be a supply and demand deficit. What does that mean? That means higher prices. So we'll see how that plays out. Obviously, time will tell. Obviously, oil is very volatile right now. I have very little uh, oil options exposure. Um, I'm more in the stock than I am in the options. So, you know, that would be my suggestion to be, be in the stock and not the options. Pretty difficult right now. Anyways, um, that's oil. The next thing is yields. Again, we should not let price dictate sentiment. We should not see the fall in yields and expect that yields are gonna stay low like this. That this is the move in yields, that the top is in. I would not say that. I would say that the market is, again, being very reactive and caught offside and presenting us opportunity. We thought the central banks were gonna pause. That was gonna be the outcome. Apparently overnight on like Wednesday night, night into Thursday, they leaked that the ECB was gonna do 50. So it wasn't such a crazy thing when they actually did 50, which was the maximum hike they were projected to do. Some people thought 25, some people thought a pause. Sounds very similar to the Fed. ECB went 50 and guess what they leaked today? That another 50 would not be that big a deal. And they also leaked that they could go another 50 after that. So that might not even be the peak. They probably don't wanna scare markets too much, unfortunately, but guess what? The Fed's got its stop plot. It's gonna be forced to project what it's gonna do. Right now, the market is priced for less than the previous stop plot suggested. My point of view and my opinion is that they're actually gonna move that dot plot more in the hawkish direction. So across the board, not the best situation here. So again, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. So that's yields, that's oil, finally the stock market. Well, I think this is the last gasp. We're seeing it. Everyone's going to the mega cap tech. They're doing what they can there. They're making that last ditch move into the mega cap tech, the overcrowded, most expensive parts of the market. And that's not wise in my opinion, um, but that's what they're doing. And that is uh, a last gasp effort, in my opinion. As I said, I think yields are low and are going to go up. So I think as yields go up, stocks will come down. And people with their fears, as yields are going up, might think, ooh, 
let me go buy some bonds. And I think that more than ever will be the case. I also think banks that did not take this week, this very opportune time, this very obvious pullback in yields, banks that did not take this period to readjust their cap tables, their balance sheets as they need to, will be in very difficult positions if they were going to be anyways. Clearly, there's not a whole lot of selling of bonds going on this week. I'm surprised. I thought banks would have done a little bit more to right-size themselves. Maybe there's not an issue. Maybe a lot of them were expecting this rise in interest rates, and that hopefully is the case. But if they didn't, I expect them to add to that selling and for yields to go up quite a bit. Not to anything too crazy. I'm not talking Volcker levels here. But, you know, 6% seems very much on the cards. Um, so we'll see what happens. I think that could deliver the next leg lower for the market. And I think it could be a pretty vicious leg. I'm talking double digit percents. But that's today's video. And until next time, peace out.